Hey legends, welcome along to Hellmouth Hotline. I'm your host, Rodney Stewart, and we're getting on to A Nightmare on Elm Street, Part 5, The Dream Child. Now this one here is incredibly interesting because it really does delve more into the the origin of Freddy Krueger. Um, it is a good movie with quite a lot of stuff squeezed in there and uh, the visuals and the effects in this movie are incredibly good and uh, there's a a sequence in it later on in the movie that uh, blends reality and with uh, comic book style uh, elements and really really good for its time um, this film here uh, doesn't seem it was just as successful as the rest of them as far as the amount of money that it grossed. Uh, they had an eight million dollar budget, fairly similar to the movie beforehand, and uh, it grossed twenty two point one million. And uh, yes, it was a bit of a decline in box office receipts from Dream Warrior and the Dream Master, uh, but still. Uh, had the highest grossing slasher film of, 19, of 1989 uh, but it did receive mostly negative reviews from critics and uh, I, don't, I don't know I think it's just never they started to really lean heavily into the uh, celebrity status of Freddy Krueger and it became a little bit more well I wanted to say light hearted but it is a slasher movie a lot of people die in the, these movies but uh, there's a lot more humour and one liners brought on for Freddy Krueger in the later movies and uh, it is what it is uh, set in 1989 again a year after the previous film Alice and Dan have started dating and there's no sign of Freddy Krueger until one day while taking a shower after having sex with Dan that's the, the opening of the movie is them getting it on in bed she has a vision of herself dressed in a nun's habit with a name tag saying Amanda Kruger on it at a strange asylum of course having seen the previous movies as the viewer we already know the story and what happened with Amanda Kruger but we're getting a little bit deeper and in this film uh, in the dream she's attacked by the patients but she wakes up uh, the next day Alice is graduating from high school along with her new friends Greta an aspiring but reluctant supermodel Mark a comic book fan and, and Yvonne a hospital volunteer and uh, the high school swim champion uh, Alice confides her nightmare to Dan who tells her she's in control of her dreams as we know, Dan and her were the only two survivors from the previous film. On her way back to work, Alice finds herself back at the asylum. But a uh, big switch up here. She enters the the dream world, or the nightmare world, without actually falling asleep. Um, she finds herself back at the asylum, where she sees Amanda giving birth to a gruesomely deformed baby. Amanda tries to collect the baby before it escapes, but it sneaks out of the operating room. Alice follows the baby into the church where she defeated Freddy in the previous film. And the baby finds Freddy's remain and quickly grows into an adult, hinting to Alice that he has found the key to coming back. Alarmed, she contacts Dan, who falls asleep en route to see her. Freddy attacks and uh, electrocutes Dan, turning him into a, a creature before veering him into oncoming traffic. It's, uh, this film here is good at, just like the previous one, uh, the nightmare deaths and what happens to people from the nightmare getting killed blends fairly seamlessly into the real world. So uh, it's the visual effects and that he's on a motorbike and uh, Freddy kind of connects him into the machinery of the bike and like he's one with the machine sort of a deal and uh, it is, it's for a nightmare it's not f fairly gruesome but yeah, 
you know, freaky enough. Uh, he dies in oncoming traffic in the street. Alice sees Dan's body in the van, dead, and then it comes to life to taunt her before she faints. Freddy animates Dan's corpse. Um, waking up in the hospital, she hears the news of Dan's death and finds out that she is pregnant with his child. In the night, she is visited by a young boy named Jacob in the hospital. But the next day, Yvonne tells her there's no children on her floor and there's no children's ward either. Uh, Alice then lets her friends know about Freddy and the whole backstory of who he is, where he came from, you know, everything, killing kids, getting out of court on a technicality, getting killed by the the parents of their the original children that were killed while he was alive, burning them to death, all that sort of stuff. You know the backstory if you're listening to this podcast. Uh, that afternoon at a dinner party at her home, Greta falls asleep at the table and she dreams of herself snapping at her mother and ranting over her controlling nature before Freddy appears and forces Greta to eat herself alive before choking uh, yes, before choking her in front of uh, the laughing audience of the people around the table uh, that's a fairly freaky death scene because of how it is connected to Alice the dream that Greta is in and what Freddy's doing to her manifests in Alice's house and uh, she opens the fridge and everything turns the all the food in it turns the mould and uh, Greta appears coming out of the door of the fridge so it's it's one of these sequences where it's just it's it's not it's not overly graphic but it's it's just the, the idea of it and the way it's executed is just one of these things that kind of sticks with you a little bit even after watching the movie uh, where are we at there we go again I have lost my place in my notes again uh, Greta falls down dead in front of her mother and their guests in the real world after being killed by Freddy in the dream Yvonne and Alice visit Mark who is grieving Greta's death turns out he was in love with her and just was scared to you know pat, let her know his feelings and uh, a rift forms between them he's not happy he's kind of taking it out on the rest of them uh, Mark falls asleep and is nearly killed by Freddy Krueger but Alice saves him before she's seeing Jacob again in the dream Jacob hunts did I even write that down properly yes Jacob turns up in the dream again uh, Jacob hunts that she is his mother so the dream child is her unborn child and um, when she's dreaming she's in the nightmare uh, she's seeing her unborn kid at about probably six seven years old um, Alice requests that Yvonne gets her for an early ultrasound and discovers uh, through a nightmare connection again that Freddy is actually using Jacob as a conduit to attack her friends even when she's awake and has been and Freddy's been feeding them as victims to make him like himself uh, it's, this is how everything's slightly different in this film uh, it's her baby and her womb when it is asleep Freddy can use the child's dreams to manifest himself so he can actually come after Alice while she's awake it's uh, a fairly ingenious idea in the movie Yvonne and Dan's parents still believe in Alice is crazy uh, insist that she give them the baby when it's born which Alice refuses Alice and Mark then research Kruger and the nun Amanda and realising that Amanda was trying to stop Freddy there's a, the, the sequence at the beginning of the movie where in the, the nightmare Alice witnesses Amanda Kruger giving birth to this kid 
Amanda actually follows her but tries to warn her but as uh, the message is lost when Alice wakes up they investigate her whereabouts and Alice goes to sleep hoping to find Amanda in the asylum while there Freddy lures her away by threatening Yvonne who has fallen asleep in a jacuzzi uh, the, the the sequence is incredibly good in the movie like the visuals are fantastic the, the effects are great but uh, I do have to agree with what was said there earlier that it's it's not as good as Dream Warriors or the Dream Master. It's it's just it started to drop off and that well you could call that a trilogy of films within the the Force Five. Uh they're all well they're all connected, but you know, the the story that started in Dream Warriors has continued through the Dream Master and this film and uh the third part just seemed a little bit weaker than the other two. Uh, where are we at now? Okay, Alice rescues Vaughn, who finally, almost at the end of the movie, starts believing what she's been told for the, the better part of the movie. Uh, Mark falls asleep and is pulled into the comic book world where Freddy slashes him apart. It's that sequence alone is great uh, in this part of the movie, Mark. He's trying to stay awake to uh, watch over Alice while she's in the nightmare trying to deal with Freddy and, you know, sort out uh, our friend Yvonne but uh, probably in this section of the movie is the one part where you know, the Freddy Krueger movies have been incredibly good at blending the this the moment where one of the victims falls asleep and enters the dream and um, as we got through the movies that got more and more apparent when it happened but this here was a fairly uh, seamless blend where he's you know he's a comic book fan he actually draws his own comics and he's lying across the floor and he's reading like X-Men and all these different sorts of superhero comic books and uh, when he falls asleep he comes across this comic book that he's never seen before and as he flicks through the pages of it you as the viewer you're seeing the uh the photo or the the comic book images and you know the the panels and every panel you're seeing there you're you're recognizing that as something that's happened earlier and earlier in the film the more he goes through the book the more you start to realize that this comic book is telling the story of the movie that we're sitting watching and the last panel that he gets to that's actually drawn and finished is at the start of a page and the, the rest of the, the blocks on that page and the page after it are all blank and the the image is of a, a guy on a stomach on the floor reading a comic book which is exactly what Mark is doing at this point and that's the point where he gets sucked into the comic book and Freddy comes after him and takes him out and there's a few one-liners out of Freddy and that part that just went beyond cheese um, he dies and that leaves Alice and Yvonne been the last one standing Alice goes to bed falls asleep to find Freddy and save her son realizing that Freddy has been hiding in her every time she fell asleep she draws Freddy out from within herself. That's actually the dream child, her kid. Tells her in the dream they lose Freddy. And he's like, he's always, he's at, he's hiding. The same place he always hides inside you. So she actually, and the fairly, probably the most graphic detail in the movie is she actually physically grabs hold of her own face and she turns into like the scarred skin of Freddy Krueger and she starts pulling at her own skin and the next thing she's ripped Freddy's head right out of her own head and the one person starts to slowly become two as she actually physically drags Freddy Krueger out of her own body for the year this movie was made that was actually unbelievably well done uh, in the real world Yvonne finds Amanda's remains at the asylum 
and joins the fight in the dream world. Uh, that sequence alone was good to use the bricked off room in the asylum tower and uh, Yvonne breaks through the wall and we see this figure of the nun on her knees in like a praying position and as Yvonne reaches to grab the shoulder the the body or the head turns and it's a skeleton Amanda died in the the shape of a nun praying and the the disfigured rotted skeleton vanishes and you see the, the ghostly image of Amanda and she says thank you to which she disappears and enters the dream world to come after Freddy uh, she encourages Jacob to use the power that Freddy has given him and uh, Jacob the baby, the dream child his face then turns into like the scarred version of Freddy as well and uh, tells Freddy to like, leave Alice alone because she's no longer and of any use to him you know, take me, I want to learn what you want to teach me sort of a deal to which Freddy is going to take him up in the offer and Jacob he unleashes Freddy's own power against himself uh, Freddy is pretty much ripped to shreds and the infant form that he was in at the beginning whenever he went looking for his you know destroyed body from the previous film is what he ends up as again and is lifted and absorbed by his mother while Alice picks up a baby Jacob and like the the baby disappears, turns into light, goes back into her stomach. Something similar to what Amanda just did on the last image we get to see of hers in the, the dream world after warning Alice away. Amanda seals Freddy away in time. So the last thing we see is her at the end of this corridor in the nightmare world. And uh, it's like Freddy's fighting against her to get out. And she's fighting to keep him in there. So, uh, you know, that's kind of where it ends off for Freddy. And at the end of the movie, several months later, uh, Jacob, now born, and uh, Alice and her, her friends, they're out having a picnic. Her father's there. Uh, Yvonne is with her. And they're, they're having a good time. Nice sunny afternoon. Having a nice little family picnic. Everybody's hungry. They're getting their food together. And as the camera pans away, there's some kids skipping with a skipping rope nearby and they're they're humming Freddy's rhyme one who Freddy's coming for you. So it always ends off the same way. Uh Freddy gets his ass handed to him, but there's a little opening at the end of the movie to say this might not be the end for Freddy Krueger. At this stage they were just getting really used to pumping these movies out. They, they had a a one and movie franchise with A Nightmare on Elm Street and uh, Freddy's Revenge, you know, the first two or three movies, hit big and every time a new one came out everybody went the same but by the time we got to The Dream Child it was starting to lose its momentum slightly. So uh, in the next review of Freddy Krueger we're going to be doing what is the one that finished the franchise for me and that was Freddy's dead uh, of course it didn't end there they brought him back for a few other things but uh, for me those first six films were definitely the the crucial ones in the series and uh, that's not to say we're going to stop at that we're going to do the new nightmare and everything else as well so that's going to do it for this episode guys hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you in another episode very very soon this has been a production of Coins Edge Media Thank you so much for listening.